Hi, I'm Marie. Welcome back to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are making dinner rolls. Tender and flaky, buttery and golden. Delicious, served with honey and butter or alongside turkey and stuffing. I personally can't wait to make these for the holidays and I'm excited for you to try them too. Let's get started. To start, we're gonna break it down into four simple steps. It's dough, knead, rise, rolls. Dough, knead, rise, rolls. First step is dough. For the dough, we'll start with our yeast mixture. You'll need active dry yeast, two and a quarter teaspoons, or one and a quarter ounces. It's usually one packet of yeast. And we're gonna add that to one tablespoon of sugar. And what this is gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our yeast is alive. And so we're gonna add some sugar and warm water and if it bubbles up and kind of separates and foams, then you know that it's active and it's working and you're not gonna waste all your other ingredients. So you do wanna do this, especially if your yeast is kind of near the expiration date or if you're not sure when it expires, be sure to do this step so you know that your yeast is active. So we'll add three tablespoons warm water and warm means around 105, 110 degrees. And I usually just do like my pinky in like a baby's bath water. If it feels nice and warm, then it's, it's right. But if you wanna do a thermometer, this is one that I love and I'll put a link in the description box. You just turn that on and put it in the water and we're at about at 105 degrees. So anywhere from like 105 to 115 is fine. You don't wanna go any hotter because that will kill your yeast. So we're gonna put in three tablespoons here. One, two, three. And then I just kind of give that a little slosh, kind of stir it up like that. And then we're gonna set this aside for about five minutes. And while we're waiting on our yeast for it to foam, we're gonna move over to the milk and butter mixture. So I'm gonna use this big measuring cup here. We're just gonna add one cup of whole milk. Now to that, we're gonna add six tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I've just recently learned, someone left a comment that, I can't remember where, I think it's Australia, that. Unsalted butter is actually more expensive. She said 50% more expensive than salted butter. So she's wondering why I always use unsalted butter. And in America, the prices are the same for unsalted and salted. So I always use unsalted and then add my own salt. But you can always use salted butter and just omit the salt or reduce the salt. So we're gonna add six tablespoons. This one's a little soft, just put those in there. And then I'll take this to the microwave and heat it for about one to two minutes. You want the butter to melt and it just to be nice and warm. All microwaves are a little different, so you're not trying to boil the liquid at all. You're just trying to warm it up and then also melt the butter. So we'll put this in. I'll start at one minute and maybe add 30 seconds if needed. While we're waiting on the milk, I'll go ahead and crack one egg. Just put that in a bowl. There's the milk and butter. I can hear that's ready. We'll give this egg a quick whisk. And then I'm gonna grab the milk and butter out of the microwave. All right, we'll give this a quick mix. The butter doesn't have to be completely melted, just, you know, soft, very soft, almost melted. And again, it's warm not hot. You don't want it hot because that also can kill the yeast when we mix it all together. So always just warm liquids when you're working with yeast. Okay, we'll set this aside and grab our dry ingredients now. So we have three and a half cups all-purpose flour here. I'm just gonna kind of make a well in the middle of that. To that, we're gonna add, actually, you don't need to make a well yet. <laughs> to that, we're gonna add one quarter cup sugar. And if you wanna reduce the sugar, you can. You can add a tablespoon, anywhere from one to four tablespoons. So, and remember, there is one tablespoon in with the yeast. So if you wanna only do that, that's fine too. I like just a little hint of sweetness in these rolls. And next is one and a half teaspoons kosher salt. And again, if you are using salted butter, then you'll want to reduce or omit the extra salt. 
Okay, we'll give this a quick stir so the salt and sugar is mixed in with the flour. And I'm gonna make a little well here. This is my kid's favorite activity. <laughs> it's like a sandbox or something. So to that, we're gonna add, let's add our whisked egg. That's hard to say, whisked, whisked. Okay, whisk, <laughs> I'm gonna add the egg. Okay, egg's going in. Next up is our milk and butter mixture here. That's going in. And finally, our foamy yeast. Looks nice and foamy there. And by the way, you can do this in your stand mixer. I've done it in that many times and it is easier and a little tidier, but I do wanna show you in a bowl, kneading it with your hands, just in case not everyone has a stand mixer. So I will show you the old fashioned way, but you can do this in the stand mixer just the same. Okay, so now we add our yeast mixture in here. It's nice and foamy, we know it's live. And now we're gonna mix our dough here. Just bring that all together. Whoops, probably should have used a little bigger bowl on this one. <laughs> I think I probably meant to use that one, but here we are in our little bowl making a mess. Okay, just keep stirring this up until all the flour is incorporated. On these cooking shows, I have my audience of one and my audience is asleep right now. <laughs> she sleeps through most of the uh, show and occasionally snores. I guess you can't blame her, can you? <laughs> Getting an arm workout here. Okay, there's our dough, and you can see it is a very, it's a wet dough, but that's what we want. So I'm gonna grab some flour here and put a little here in a bowl beside me. And now we will sprinkle a little flour here on the mat and I can put a link to this mat in the description box. I found it recently, I've had it forever, I forgot about it. Um, and recently discovered it again and I'm using it all the time now because it kind of, you know, it's easy, things don't stick to it so it's easier to knead, it's easier to roll out pie crust and it's also kind of easy to carry over the sink and um, when it's time to clean up, so. I have enjoyed this. Okay, I'm putting a little flour on it to make it a little less sticky. The goal at this point is to Add a little flour so it's not super sticky, but not so much flour that it changes the consistency of the dough. So just a little at a time is really the key. Okay, there's our dough. It's pretty sticky, so <laughs> gonna get some flour on there. So kneading, you just wanna bring it towards you and then push it away. And it is pretty sticky here, so I'm just gonna add flour till it's, I can work with it. And bring it towards me and push it away. Bring it towards me and push it away. And you need to do this for about 10 minutes. So you can set a timer if you're forgetful like me. <laughs> I need some help remembering just about everything. But again, we're just pulling it toward us and then pushing it away. Toward us, pushing it away. So every year for Thanksgiving, we go to my sister-in-law's house in New Jersey and stay with them for several days. And then we go to New York City for the second half of that week. And it is so much fun. I look forward to it every year. I look forward to it all year almost. It is just such a fun little getaway and we see family and get to explore New York City, go to a show, see all the changing leaves, although at that point they've pretty much changed. Sometimes we get a little snow, which is amazing for us from Texas. So I'm excited this year I'm going to make these rolls. I usually don't do a lot on Thanksgiving which is kind of ironic, right? <laughs> so all I do is cook and then I don't do, I don't cook on Thanksgiving. I do make the pies. 
um, which I love to do. So I'm usually in charge of pies. And then this year I'm going to add rolls to that because I think everybody is going to love having fresh dinner rolls. And you can make this dough the night before. So I always love to have make ahead things. I will definitely make it ahead in New Jersey because the kitchen gets really crowded. So I'll definitely make these ahead and have them ready to just pop in the oven. And I'll skip through the next eight minutes of this so you don't have to watch it. <laughs> Same deal though. Oh, and one other tip real quick. Good to get this bowl in some water and soap as quick as possible. Flour and water is like glue. So do yourself a favor and put this dirty bowl in some soap and water as quickly as possible. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time kind of scraping out this dried flour glue. Okay, I've been kneading for about 10 minutes. So we have our nice smooth ball of dough here and take some oil or butter and oil the bowl. And then we're just gonna take our nice ball of dough and put it in there, coat it in the oil, make it into a ball. Like that. Next, we'll take some saran wrap, or this is press and seal, and we're just going to cover that and put it in a warm place. In Texas here, I've been putting it outside on my porch when it's nice and warm outside. I'm gonna let this rise until it doubles in size. It'll just get a lot bigger and you'll know, don't worry about too much about the exact amount that it's rising, but you'll wanna wait about one to two hours. All right, set this aside. Okay, so we do have our dough here that I made early this morning. You can see it has risen a lot. <laughs> so we'll take our saran wrap off. And if you have children or grandchildren in the house, you might invite them to do this part. My kids love to do it. It's called punching it down. So you're just gonna punch the dough down and bring it into a ball, kind of knead it into a ball. And we're just trying to work all the air bubbles out because we're gonna let it rise again and build some new air bubbles. So all these are going out. Okay. There's our dough, looks great. Oh, look how pretty it is. It's all shiny, soft and smooth. Okay, now we are ready to make this into rolls. So we did our dough, then we did our knead, then we did our rise, and now we're doing rolls. It's a little difficult to just pinch off amounts and guess how, how much this divided into 16 parts is, but this is my hack for doing that. So first what you're going to do is cut the big loaf in half, the big ball of dough in half. Then we'll cut that in half. And if you do want these to be exactly even, you can use a kitchen scale and they're about 55 grams each, 55 to 60. And then we'll cut those in half. So you just keep cutting in half and it's a much easier way to get even pieces. So now I'm gonna roll these into little balls of dough. Like that. No special technique here, just kind of round them out a little bit. Now we need to do our other, set these aside, we'll do our other half. We're gonna cut that in half and then half, and then half. And then these go into little balls. So we're just gonna cut each of those eight balls of dough in half. It's not exactly even, but it does not matter at all. Whenever I think about if I start to get stressed about some food that I'm making, it doesn't look quite right, or it's a little, the rolls are different sizes or something like that. I just think about people at the table. They're not gonna be noticing that. They're gonna smell the rolls, warm, buttery, golden rolls, and they're gonna love it. So don't worry, don't get too caught up in the exact size, the exact way they look. Just remember it's delicious food you're making for people that you love or people that you enjoy or people that you sort of enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, now I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. This is a small baking sheet. You could use a large one. You can use a baking dish if you prefer. And all we're gonna do is take our little balls of dough, make them into nice little balls. I kind of think of it as like a mushroom. It kind of looks like a mushroom here. And then I kind of twist the bottom and put that on my baking sheet. We're gonna do four across and four down. So just form these into your little balls here, kind of like a mushroom shape. Kind of twist the bottom. And then these can be just about touching. They're going to rise and expand and then they are going to touch. And then when you bake them and you pull them apart, they are so good. They all stick together, you know, you kind of pull them apart and it's all flaky. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming up and I don't want you to miss any of them. So many fun ones for the holidays and I got a new microphone. So hopefully the sound is gonna be better. <laughs> Always improving over here. And I appreciate your comments so much y'all. Just helping me make better videos and I appreciate it. Also leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever made homemade dinner rolls or if you plan to try them, I can't wait to hear how it goes. The reason we are making rolls today is because I did get a request from Phyllis. She asked for Parker House rolls and I had never made them, but I did research them a bit. And it's basically the same recipe as this, except instead of putting them into balls, you roll them out, cut them into kind of long slices and then fold them over. I guess that's the tradition of Parker House rolls is that they're folded in half. And I'm such a time saver type person where I just thought, you know what, I don't wanna roll it out and I don't wanna to have to measure the rectangle and then cut out the squares. You can certainly do that if you want, but it feels like extra mess and extra time. Uh, so I just like this little method of making them into balls, keeping it simple, but the flavor will be Parker House rolls. Okay, there is our 16 little rolls. They look great. We're going to take some more saran wrap and just cover those like that. And you can at this point refrigerate them. Then what you'll need to do is bring them out about an hour, hour and a half before you plan to bake them and let them come back to room temperature and get a good rise. I'm gonna just set these aside in a warm spot and let these rise. It'll take about 45 minutes to an hour. They'll just kind of expand. There's no real science to it. Just wait 45 minutes or an hour and then they're ready to bake. All right, we're back and the rolls have risen. So I'm going to just Pull the saran wrap off. Now we're gonna do a little egg wash on top to give them a nice golden finish. And if you like, you can add some flaky salt. And I am gonna preheat my oven now to 375 degrees. So the last step is to get one more egg. We're gonna make an egg wash. And this is optional. It does just make a really nice golden shiny finish. Now to the egg, I'm just gonna add a few teaspoons of water and we'll whisk this up. And what I do like to do with my egg wash, just to make it a little less stringy, I do this for pies too, give it a good whisk with the water and then just let it run through a strainer. Some recipes will tell you to do butter on top and I find that it just absorbs right into the roll and it's not quite as shiny and golden. So I really prefer the egg wash to just butter or cream. Now, Got a little pastry brush here. I love this little pastry brush. It's so easy to use and nice and small. And then we're just going to paint this egg wash on top of our rolls. Now we'll pop these in the oven at 375 degrees and bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes or until nice and golden. Okay, the rolls are done. We're gonna grab them out of the oven. Wow, they look gorgeous. 
so nice and golden. You can see they're all kind of pulled together, so we're gonna pull them apart and they're gonna be all flaky and just so good. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit, but I can't wait to dive in. I'm actually gonna take the rest of them and another batch up to my son's school. I'm helping feed the football team today, and so I think they're really gonna enjoy these homemade rolls. Oh my gosh, so flaky, so good. Break off a piece here. Oh, mmm. They are so good. There's nothing like a homemade dinner roll. You've got to try these. And let me know if you do. I want to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining us on Maria's Kitchen. Today we made these easy and delicious golden buttery dinner rolls. I can't wait for you to try them. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It means so much to me and also to YouTube. That's how they decide who else sees this video. So take a minute and hit that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming up and I don't want you to miss any of them. For this recipe and more, head over to my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe and all my recipes, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen Cookbook for free. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you.